So I moved to Florida and um, been training with some of the top guys for three months. Like, said about a draft or something? Yeah, so the draft is tomorrow. That should be insane. Yeah, but like, it's, you know, it's like you get a phone call, it's that sort of thing. That's only a certain amount of teams can come with you or any team? No, yeah, all 32 can oh, okay. choose, but there's only a, there's a certain amount of picks. The conversations are quicker in the States, you know, because they know what you're doing, they know what it means, you know what I mean? And then the conversation's over, but over here, you know, it means a bit more because, like, nobody's really done it, so. Are you, defen are you a defensive back? Yeah, a defensive end, yeah. So what does that mean? So that means I'm the guy who goes after the quarterback, basically, okay. yeah. The main quarterback as well, Patriots quarterback, is it? Yeah. What his name? I know who he is though, like he's very famous. <clears throat> that's, that's, um, mate, my knowledge is terrible, isn't it really? Tom something. Tom Brady. That's it. What about Dan Marino? Dan Marino? Does he, he think of the Dolphins? Yeah. I thought that was just for the film. What, for Ace Ventura? Yeah, I thought that was probably just for the <laughs> that's film. That's why I, I said it. I didn't think he was a real player. Yeah, nah, he's a real quarterback. Did he, do, did he actually make that mistake? So we, we hear it a little bit over here. But yeah, but not enough, you know? Like it's not it's never in the papers or anything. Like That's what we're trying to change. The sport with only a small European following is ingrained in American culture. Every year, a hundred thousand kids play high school football in the US. Only about two hundred of those will make it to the NFL. Four international players are hoping for that winning lottery ticket. But while others have had decades to prepare, they have had just 90 days. The 90 days of training in Florida are over. The European players are back home. Alex Jenkins, a native of Bath, is enjoying his old surroundings. So this is the Great Bath, where the Romans used to bathe 2,000 years ago. Just overlooking the Bath Abbey over there. And these are like the original, the original stones from like 2,000 years ago, I believe, yeah. But it's pretty cool for like this to be in your hometown, it's crazy. Coming back here brings back so many memories. I feel like I've got a memory in every single place, every single inch of this town. This is the Royal Crescent, yeah. So this is where I would always come as a kid to play ball games, soccer, rugby, anything. His trip down memory lane is leading him straight to his date with the future. Day three of the NFL draft is just a day away, and Jenkins has reason to feel hopeful. Yeah, I fielded a few calls this week, so, and some really positive calls, you know. Yeah, Jacksonville, to my knowledge, they have two seven-round picks that they're choosing in London. They've shown a lot of interest in me in this whole process, even from the start of last season, so, I don't know. We'll see. Have you got, like, a one that you you're looking at? Oh, mine goes to the Jaguars, yeah. It would make some sense, yeah, you know, especially because Jacksonville are trying to grow the brand, you know, over here. And, you know, what better way to grow it than to, like, and show an actual vested interest into, you know, someone who's, you know, a British-born and bred football player. I think what, he, what he's picked now is it. That's his destiny, I think. He's um, very determined, single-minded, focused. He's got a passion for the game as well, that's it. I think he's going to be an asset to any, any team. Up north, Alex Gray waits to see if his hard work is rewarded. This is what England is all about. On a Sunday, the roast dinner, can't beat it. There's roast beef, carrot, broccoli, um, Yorkshire pudding <laughs> and roast potatoes. No, I couldn't, couldn't find any of this where I was. Not in Miami. My son played for England 
unfortunately had leukemia and died 10 years ago. Uh, but Alex wrote in his memoriam that uh, David, you are my inspiration and I will play rugby for England. And he's done it. I just kind of felt like I was getting, you know, stagnating a little bit. I just wanted something to, that I could just really like put myself outside my comfort zone, I guess. Um, and you know, that surely has done, <laughs> this, is, this is definitely doing that. They've always supported them for whatever they wanted to do and encouraged them. So I thought, well, just go for it. You know, it can only get better, can't it? Just go for it. Yeah. And I said to him, grab it with two hands and go for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said, I'll carry your bags. What about the helmet? Is the helmet very heavy? It's heavier than I thought it was going to be. It is a lot harder to, to like yeah. locate a ball and catch a ball, but the shoulder pads aren't too bad. Shoulder pads not too bad. Not too bad, but the, yeah, the helmet is heavy. Like after the first couple of days of doing it, my neck was really sore. Yeah. Can you adjust that visor thing? Do you wear gloves? Yeah. Because oh. the guys over there, they throw it really hard. So if you're a spectator, you can be in the stadium for about four hours. But I think yeah, about three hours. Yeah. Three hours, but the map, but you're only on for a few minutes at a time. When I speak to all the football players that I've been training with, they um, they said they would never play rugby. Really? Yeah, they think it's like really barbaric and it's so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, it is very different. Right. Okay. Um, oh well, can't yeah. wait to go across and see you. Yeah. <laughs> Save up the pennies. Once homeless, Effie Obada now finds comfort in being back home. Right now we're in Felons. It's like a little park, a little lake up at Stevenage. You know, I just like to come here sometimes, clear my head, you know, get away from everything. You know, it's like my little, uh, little space, you know. Also, sometimes I come here to train, uh, you know, do some laps. Sometimes I'll do some get-offs on the hills. There's a little hill all the way down there. It's a very steep hill. You know, we do hill runs, we do bear crawls. I'm not really around any uh, football fields or anything like that, so I just kind of make the most of what I've got. I love the water. You know, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's, uh, it's calm. You know, I feel sorry for that one. The white one, yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get him some. But he's not, he's not white. Growing up like in the, in the city and things like that, it's just... You don't really get to see a lot of like open space and a lot of water and a lot of like nature. Hey, don't do that. I'm an outdoors type of person. You know, I like nature, I like animals. I like being outside. And you know, being around water as well. Just I don't know, it just does something for me. It calms my head. Look at them, they're just, just living, you know, just doing their thing, I'm not worried about anything. Life of a duck. <laughs> so this is it, this is where it all began. My jersey's up here somewhere on the other side. So this is Bristol, Filton Wise College. So this is basically where I began, you know, this is where I found American football. This is the same field I trained on, you know, all those years ago. All right, so thanks for turning up. We've got Alex Jenkins here with me today. Um, Alex is a, a former player with the Aztecs Junior Program, which at that time was our community setup. It was a bit last minute because of the, the time we had to do it. But I think getting 40 kids here last second kind of shows the impact that he's made and that he's, he's going to make on all the British kids that, that want to get where he is. Nice, 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 nice. Good, stay square to the line of scrimmage, all right? It's huge. We don't have access to American coaches on our doorstep. We don't have a professional league that, that it gets American coaches over or American players over. Ready, go. So this type of stuff's invaluable for them. I mean, there won't be other kids in the country that have had that access, and as a result, they'll be better for it. And you can tell that people over here, they want to learn, and they, they like the game, they love the game, and they're invested in it. But, you know, the coaching isn't there, the equipment isn't there. You can do a little tea trap. But this time, obviously, I was showing them techniques or I was showing them stuff that I had learned NFL level, which is different than college. So, you know, I just didn't want to overcoach them. You know what I mean? I didn't want to confuse them. 
someone that's that honest, that humble, um, to see him actually get what he deserves, which is really rare in life, and it really couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> Here we go, three groups again, so I get the group out of each Choose a coach. Place. Choose a coach you want to hit the most. No, 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 don't say that, don't say that. I think they enjoyed it, I think they got something out of it, yeah. I didn't realise how much it meant to them until I looked into their eyes after and like seeing like the admiration and to see that you know they, they want to be in the position that I am and they want to achieve the same thing. So I don't know, it was humbling, you know. Not only has coaching provided a humbling experience, it's provided a welcome distraction for Alex Jenkins while he awaits an uncertain future. I wasn't even paying attention to the time. It's nice to not have to, you know, think about, you know, the life-changing things that are going to happen in the next couple of hours and all that. So it was great. I would have done it all day. Like, let's do another one right now. Back home in Bishop Auckland, Alex Gray has some football students of his own. The what? One hundred things. <laughs> oh yeah. Brothers Josh and Ollie are rugby players. Today's lesson is American football. Lock it in. Good. <laughs> you just got to catch it. That. So you're supposed to frame it. That's the one. <laughs> All right. So we're going to run what's called the corner rob. I'm going to attack him, and then I'm going to break out towards the outside. Almost as if I'm going to the corner post. Colour number, so like blue 42, blue 42, set hurt. Or any colour or any number of your choice. Red 42, red 40. <laughs> 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 I thought you'd gone over there, not over there. You used to pass the ball like that, not over arm, definitely not. It's hard to get the, the spin on it and stuff. Blue, ah. Attack me, attack me. It's as if you're going to a, and you're in the middle of a field and you're going to the corner. Yeah. So let's go the corner route. I probably know a little bit, a little bit more than these two. I hope I would everyway after training for a couple of months. The hardest one is when it's coming over your shoulder and you're looking back this way. Yeah. It is the ball and it comes over this side like that. And you've got to find it. So you've got to be like that. Yeah. You'll see it into your hands all the time. Jeez. Harder than it looks. Coming from rugby, that's one one catch you never ever make is you know something coming over your head because you're always facing the ball, like in that, this kind of area. The teacher is far from the expert himself, but he uses any chance he can to squeeze in some extra work. <laughs> you think these all night, will you? I've got a few in the bank. Come on, a switch. Uh, uh. After some American football, the brothers head to the pitch for something more familiar. You work in the shadows so you can play in the light, um, and that's kind of where it all started for me here. You know, days and afternoons and nights down here, you know, working on my craft by myself when no one was around. Nice. A few times a year they're all together and we we'll always make a point to get down somewhere to do a little bit of chuck about and a little bit of training. It's just in the blood, I think, you know, it's amazing. Ooh. You just to spend some quality time because as an athlete you're away all over the place and you don't get to come home as much as you like. So, you know, after the couple of months I've had, you know, grinding away. It's been nice to come back to you know, where it all started with, with the people who it's, who it's all about and uh, spend some time with them. Two, three, four, five, six. You know, they're a huge motivation for me. And they always have been, they always will be. I've never felt pressure from them at all. Maybe the pressure from six. myself to try, and, to try and do them proud. Oh, that's me, that's me. You know, I'm just trying to enjoy this and, and make everyone proud. I mean, he's definitely had an impact on our sport and lives, just sort of, you know, not being afraid to do what he wants, 
you know what I mean? Like I have total respect for him to, to sort of just go into a totally new sport, just drop and just drop everything he knows and just try to learn something and put it all in. I'm not sure what they're doing now. Oh, I think they're running routes, aren't they? I'm not sure they know what they're doing. He showed me the play, uh, playbook yesterday mm. and he was telling me all these calls and I was just like, I, how, how are you learning this? Yeah. This, like, he showed me one call and he said, in the huddle, after getting hit, you'd have to learn this call and there's like eight words and you, you have to react to someone else's movement and stuff. It's, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. This is where you don't want to be. You don't want to give them both sides. So that's why when you took off, I came here, kept you on the shoulder, touch lines your friend. Just you can't go anywhere else now, that's why you have to kick it. So just remember that when you're defending. I can't imagine how many people are saying, oh, or before I do this, oh, he, you'd never be able to do that, you wouldn't be able to do that. It's, it's not possible, but, you know, here I am, you know, on the verge of playing in the NFL, and, you know, it shows to my brothers, to these people, that if you want something and you're willing to work for it, you know, it's there for you. If it was to fail in whatever way, then he'd come back and he would play rugby and he would be welcomed back and whatever, you know. You move on in the sport and, you'd, you know, he'll always do well in it because he's got that commitment, work ethic and a good ethos. Ah, it's yours. <laughs> you know, he, he, he will get back up. You know, if you like, I don't think you would consider it as a knockdown. What a marvellous experience this is to do this, to get as far as you possibly can in something like this. Welcome to our NFL Now Live coverage on the third and final day of the 2017 NFL Draft, the city of brotherly love, the 215. 3,500 miles away from Philadelphia, Alex Jenkins awaits his draft fate. He's put in the necessary work, opened eyes at both the regional combine and his pro day, and now it's up to a team to call his name. Now he seems a bit calmer than what he was earlier on. He seemed a bit, a bit um, agitated. It's very sort of exciting times. Well, it has been crazy, so um, yeah, life changing. Upsetting when he left, very upsetting. It's okay now, I'm okay now. I'm, I'm relaxed, you know. I'd just be happy for Alex. You know, this is like getting drafted is like winning a lottery. It's, like, it's not, it's not likely, you know. For me to get drafted like that would be a miracle. Yeah. Any time the phone rings on draft day, the heart skips a beat. The first call of the day is from Alex's agent, with not much of an update. Okay. Um, a team in Denver, and he was talking about uh, the, the Jaguars as well. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just hoping Alex gets sort of, he sees his his dream come true, sort of thing. Regardless of the team, just him getting into the NFL, I think that's what I just love to see today. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know what's going on. It's, sort of, it's kind of hectic, you know, when all of them are in there, you don't want to let anyone down. But they, you know, it's just the stakes are so high, and it's just such a just such a strange thing to be doing, you know what I mean? No, I don't think there's ever been an NFL draft party in Bath, ever. It's the first one, so, yeah. But either way, they'll be supportive of me, and they won't be disappointed, you know? Yeah. So it could happen pretty quick, so that's, that's what you're saying. I think I'm just gonna relax a little bit more, you know what I mean? Well, maybe Adam just made me feel a bit more relaxed about it. He just said, don't worry about it, either way. Like, you're going to be on a team, so just well, don't worry, stop worrying. Still, we're still in the same place, you know. We're still where we were 40 minutes ago. So, yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> yeah. Just had to get away from the craziness to talk to him. It just means more waiting, which I don't like. Hey, Alex, what team would you want to play for? Don't matter. If you had a choice. Don't matter. Mm, Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same way you play for, isn't it? No, I play for the, like, college Cardinals. Hmm. Yeah. I want you to play for the Falcons. Yeah. The Denver Broncos select Isaiah McKenzie, wide receiver, Georgia. Yeah. 
Well, basically, if the phone rings, we need utter silence and everyone's got to get out of the room, yeah? If it rings. Is this round five? This is round, no. Round six? This is round seven. Round seven. North Carolina, yeah? The phone call is just another tease. No news is not good news. Oh, okay, okay. If, if we don't get a good offer in priority free agency, or he said if the Jags don't get you, or whatever, same, same, same deal. Out to London. Guess what, it's the Jaguar selection, of course. Coming to you live from downtown London, standing in front of the iconic Tower Bridge. Jacksonville Jaguar, flight. Jalen Wyatt. Jalen. Damn, he went late, didn't he? He ran the second fastest 40 in the... I trained with him in Florida. Chad Kelly, quarterback from Mississippi. Thank you very much, Philadelphia. All right, that's it. Yeah. Long day. Long day. Mm. Everyone looks so disappointed. <laughs> it's not over yet. No. <laughs> Of course not, bro. I'm not disappointed, bro. Yeah. 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 Proud of you, bro. Yeah, yeah. We're all proud of you, bro. Yeah. That's how you got yeah. to, man. I know. The foursome is reunited in London to continue training. Undrafted and unsigned, they have no teams to call their own. Frustration is growing. Literally, that's all we can do is stay ready, stay healthy, stay ready to go. It's just a waiting game, and it sucks. All of us are just trying to get out there and like, just get loose, have fun again, play football. It's been such a long road for me especially. You know, and all the work I'd put in to get myself to this point was all to get onto a team. It's just the mystery of it, I guess. Just watching uh, NFL Channel and just seeing them training and... Uh... I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm getting left behind a little bit. But, you know, we, we kind of got the news that we want. It's just a waiting game right now, so... The news they received is a game changer. The NFL approved the International Path Programme. One division will be chosen at random, and each team in that division will obtain the rights to one of the four international players. What we have now is an international practice squad roster, or a spot for each player. Each team is going to have one player from the international pool of players that we have. It's not like we're taking away a spot from them. This is a spot that has been added to the original practice squad roster. We all want the NFL to expand its reaches all over the globe, and this is a way to actually do that. The players have a guaranteed job for the 2017 season. They cannot be activated to play, but they can't be cut either. I was a second round pick, and I got to the NFL, and I wasn't a good player immediately. It took me a long period of time. So a lot of these guys, some of them have never played the game before. Some of them have only been playing for a short period of time. They really have no chance of making it onto these teams if you just put them out there. It would just be fodder. So we needed to create something, a system where else they can be able to learn at least for a year and you know pick up the game, pick up the environment, pick up all the things that they need to enable them to succeed. O.C. Umanura invites the players to the NFL offices in London to reveal their dream job assignments. Well, well, well. <laughs> What do we have? <laughs> the day we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. On the next undiscovered, dreams are realized. But the work 
Visão Lichas Vigan.